Hey, I'm Blake. Welcome to my lab. Let's learn about stuff. I hope you're ready to study the sky and sea. Don't have your head in the clouds. What are you waiting for? Welcome back to the Creation Lab. So good to see your smiling faces here, ready to learn more about God and His creation. Yesterday was day one, so that makes today day two. I knew we had some math whizzes out there. Can you remember what we learned about yesterday? Let's do a little review. Day one, God made light. That's right, God made light so that we can see. I hope you've been shining your Christian light so everybody can see it. So, when God is creating the universe, you see Him slowly add things that creatures need to survive. What are some of those things? Just yell them out at me. I heard light and air, food and water, all great answers. On day two, God will make two of those things, air and water. Water is a big deal. Over 70% of the world is covered in water, and that's just the stuff on the ground. Oh, you didn't know there was water in the air? What do you think those big fluffy things in the sky are? Cotton candy? Clouds are water way up in the sky, and when they get too big, they come down as rain. But how does all that water get up there? We'll talk about that later. First, let's talk about day two of creation. Let's read what happens on the next day in Genesis chapter 1. On day one, God began the process of His creation by making light in the passage of time. Today He will lay the foundation for living things on earth, air, water, and atmosphere necessary for life. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the waters from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. So on day two, God started to shape the earth as we know it now. That passage from the Bible uses that word firmament a lot, and it's a little confusing. The simplest answer is that it means sky or heavens. Uh, the sky is that big layer of air that surrounds our planet. Why is air so important? Well, take a big breath. That's why we need air to breathe. You see, when God made the first person a few days later in creation, he breathed into him so that he would start to live. How cool is that? On earth now, we have this layer of air that surrounds the planet that we call the atmosphere. Eventually, it stops after about 50 miles, and then it becomes space, which has no air at all. That's why astronauts have to wear those special suits with air tanks when they go into space. See, Earth is the only place in the universe that has air that lets things live in it. Other planets, they have atmospheres, but they're not safe to breathe. Nothing can live or grow there. God made Earth special, a special place for you and me and all this other life that we have, plants and animals. The earth is also special in that God created water for us. God's creation of water is one of his most impressive creations. Water is easily in one of three states of matter, liquid, solid, or gas. Water, ice, or snow, or steam, or water vapor, or clouds. Water, like everything else, has these different states of matter based on what temperature it is. If it's cold enough, it'll freeze. Hot enough, it'll turn, it, turn into steam in a process called evaporation. Boiling a pot of water is the quickest, most obvious way that water evapor evaporates. 
But if you've ever seen a puddle slowly get smaller on a hot day, then you've seen evaporation. The water at the surface slowly turns into gas when it heats up from the sun or high temperatures. That water in gas form or water vapor goes into the atmosphere and becomes clouds in what is called condensation. If you've ever left a cold drink out for a while, you'll see those tiny droplets of water form on the outside of a glass bottle or can. That's condensation. That's what happens when water in its gas form in the air, it cools down and it sticks to whatever is cold. Up in the sky, it sticks to tiny particles floating around in the atmosphere, dust and all sorts of things. And that's what clouds are. You see, up in the sky, way far from the earth, it's way colder up there than down here. So eventually those clouds gather so much water that they can no longer support themselves in the sky. And the water comes down as rain or as snow if it's cold enough. This process is called the water cycle. It's a truly incredible system that God has put in place on earth. Water evaporates from rivers, oceans, lakes, and other kinds of groundwater. That water vapor, it goes to the sky and it hangs out, hangs out uh, for a while around in the air, and then it comes down as rain and rejoins that groundwater in the rivers and lakes. And this process repeats over and over and over and over. And this allows us to have a planet that can support life because things need water to live. God designed a process that would water the plants and provide water for everything. Uh, kind of like a built-in sprinkler system for the whole world. <clears throat> it is so wonderful that God created a world that would provide for our needs. Ugh, I am so thirsty. Skeeter, what's wrong? I'm so thirsty and I can't find water anywhere. You said there's water in the air, so I've been standing around with my mouth open trying to quench my thirst. And all it's done is dried my mouth out even more. Yeah, I would imagine that you get cotton mouth pretty easily. Silly Skeeter, you can't drink water out of the air. You've got to wait for it to rain first or go to a water fountain. I hate being thirsty. I wish I could never be thirsty again. Well, Jesus can make that happen. Jesus has made a beverage that can quench your thirst and you never have to drink again? Tell me more. Well, sort of. Let me show you. It's in John 4. Jesus is traveling and he comes across a well. He sits by that well in order to take a rest. Traveling by foot? No joke. A woman goes to the well to draw some water and Jesus asks her for a drink. This totally shocks the woman because she's a Samaritan and Jesus is a Jew. Samaritans and Jews do not get along at all. And she says, why are you asking me for a drink? Aren't you a Jew? Jesus says, if only you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink of my living water. She laughs and says, you have nothing to draw water with and this well is deep. How are you going to give me this water? Jesus says, this water in the well, if you drink it, you'll be thirsty again. But if you drink my water, you'll never be thirsty again. Wow, never thirsty again. I want some of that. I'd never have to drink ever again. You're thinking about this just like that woman did. See, she was thinking about the physical, but Jesus wasn't talking about a physical drink of water. He was talking about spiritual water. He was offering her eternal life. Eternal life? Doesn't that mean living forever? Exactly right. Jesus isn't talking about taking a sip of the best water you'd ever drink, as good as that might sound. He's talking about being in heaven forever with God. All of this, this body and this world, it's all temporary. But heaven, it's forever. And us going to heaven has always been important to God and a part of his plan. He's got a place prepared for us. When can we go to that place? That sounds incredible. One day, but we don't know when that'll be. Our verse for the day might answer that question for you. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. 
One day we'll beat Jesus in the clouds. Wow! Yeah, but we have to make sure that we're in Christ, though, or else we won't get that living water. How do I get in Christ? Is there something I have to do? You have to be a Christian, and that means knowing that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came here on earth to die for us. And because he died, we can have eternal life. But that means we have to be baptized in water to have that relationship with Jesus. Baptized? Isn't that what that pool behind the preacher is all about? My older brother Scooter went in there. Is that when he became a Christian? Right. Baptism and going into that water is a symbol of death of Christ and the old version of us dying. When we go down in those waters, we come up a new creation. Hey, just like how we're talking about this week. Creation. Wow, I can't wait for that day. Seeing Jesus in the clouds and all the Christians going to heaven. But, uh, can I get some water now? I'm really thirsty. Of course. Mr. Cliff is going to want to sing some songs. You're going to have to get that singing voice all ready to go. Okay, Blake, are you ready to teach Skeeter and all our new friends the second verse of the creation song? I sure am, but first, let's see if they can remember the first verse. That's a good idea. Ready, guys? Day one, day one, God made light when there was none. Day one, day one, God made light when there was none. Good job, guys. That's awesome. Now it's time to add verse two in the second day of creation. What happened on day two? Uh, God made the clouds and skies so blue. Ah, oh, that's right. So everybody sing with us. Ready? All right. Day two, day two, God made clouds and skies so blue. Day two, day two, God made clouds and skies so blue. Wow, you guys are doing such a great job. Make sure you remember those two verses for tomorrow. Cliff, since we learned about water today, let's sing deep and wide. I love singing about how big God's love is for us. I think that's a great idea, Blake. Okay, are, you, are we ready? Here we go. All right, first of all, we got to make the deep motion and then we got to make the wide motion. Ready? And deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, well that's all the time that we have. If you want to sing the rest of those verses of that song, go on over to our singing video. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye, guys.